Ma ci già andavo? But he's about to realize he's not just building a home. He's building a family. You know it's been kind of hard making the move and all. I think you're a cool son. And you're a cool dad. Kevin! Oh, I might need that money tonight. Oh, I've never had pains like this before. Oh, this is the worst one I ever had, son. Oh, it's the worst one. This is a big one. I'm dying. You hear that, Elizabeth? I'm coming to join you, honey. Oh. Maybe that's Elizabeth. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Don't you believe in equality amongst the sexes? And can't men do everything women can do? No. No, we can't. It's unnatural. A little bit icky. Your guys? Well, what did you think Daddy Daycare meant? I thought maybe he one guy, not nothing but guys. I just thought it was a clever name. Is this the daycare place? They're guys. They're all guys. They're what? Excuse me. Listen, we are two loving, caring parents. We run a daycare center. People are sickos is what you are. When Mr. Drummond took on two kids from Harlem. Welcome, gentlemen. He got a little more than he bargained for. Welcome, little brother. <laughs> what you smoke? <laughs> They may be as different as night and day. I've never seen a black goldfish before. That's okay. He never saw a rich white man before either. We're adding new titles every day to our awesome collection of blockbuster movies. From Hollywood to Nollywood. Download the app and subscribe. This isn't just a streaming channel. This is a bold new world of entertainment. Arise Play. Beyond Streaming. Arise Plays Movie Box is partnering with IndieView Festival Lagos, the home of the most exceptional short films curated from across Africa and the diaspora. Every month, three winning movies of the IndieView Festival competition will feature on the Arise Play streaming platform and benefit from the full Movie Box package and more. Do you think your short film can compete and win at the IndieView Festival? Then follow at IndieViewLegos on Instagram for more information on how to submit your entry. Jumpstart your movie career today and get on the path to fame with the exclusive IndieView and MovieBox partnership. Arise Play. Beyond Streaming. There are indications that the People's Democratic Party has finally abandoned the zoning formula of the PDP after a 37-man committee set up by the main opposition unanimously decided to throw open the presidential ticket of the party to aspirants from all geopolitical zones of the country, but subject to ratification by the PDP National Executive Committee. Now, the zoning of the PDP's presidential ticket has been a subject of debate ahead of the party's primary election next month. While some members of the party from the south are demanding that the ticket be zoned to the region, those from the north want it to be thrown open. This debate has again thrown open the underbelly of Nigerian politics, with several social, cultural and religious groups urging the PDP not to toy with the feelings of Nigerians as it works towards producing its candidate for the 2023 elections. What does this mean for the main opposition party? Could this be another storm brewing? We'll be speaking with analysts on their reactions to the party's uh, decision, which is awaiting a ratification by the neck of the party. I'm Somna Sambo, and this is the Arise interview.
Welcome to the show. Now, ahead of the People's Democratic Party's uh, presidential primary election slated for May 28th, uh, which is next month, party sources say the zoning committee led by the Benue State Governor Samuel Otom has thrown open the ticket. After three meetings in the last two weeks, many governors on the platform of the PDP from the South agitating that the ticket uh, be zoned to the South, while PDP members in the North and presidential aspirants from the North want zoning jettisoned. But addressing journalists after the meeting, Autumn says the committee unanimously adopted a position which will be forwarded to the National Executive Committee of the party. Unanimously adopted a position that will be sent to the neck of our party that appointed us. So uh, the good news for our teaming supporters of the PDP and Nigerians is that we have resolved. And every one of us, the 37 members, unanimously adopted the position we are going to present to next. All right. Um, earlier on, we have uh, Governor Samuel Otom on our morning show uh, program and where he said categorically that uh, that decision actually lies in the hands of NEC and he and the committee has not thrown open the ticket. I will just want to quote him before we bring in our guest. As far as the committee was concerned, there were arguments that the presidential candidate should go to the south, while some said it should go to the northern part of the country. There were others who were of the opinion that it should be thrown open for the best candidate who will be able to deliver good governance and make Nigerians feel like human beings again. Well, interesting times ahead. For more on this, I'm now being joined in the studio by two elder statesmen, Professor Charles Mwakiaku, who is the secretary of the Igbo Elders Consultative Forum, and Dr. Hakim Baba Ahmed, who is the spokesman of the Northern Elders Forum. Also joining us from Port Harcourt in River State is the National Publicity Secretary of the Pan Niger Delta Forum. Uh, Kenny Robinson. And I'll start with you, Professor Mwakiaku. Uh, what do you read to all of these developments in Nigeria's major opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, considering your earlier agitations that that party must zone its presidential ticket to the southern part of the country, and specifically to the southeast? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, welcome, viewers. Uh, as a matter of fact, personally, I wasn't surprised when I heard that the ticket had been thrown open by the PDP committee. In the first place, PDP had started selling the forms, nomination forms, before setting up a, a committee. So in other words, the committee was set up just as an article of faith to fulfill our righteousness, not actually to make any fundamental recommendation that will be used as an uh, ingredient of uh, uh, substantive policy. So that is one. Second, you find out again that they got a member from each state, and then plus the chairman. Already, South, the Southern people are crying of marginalization. So by the time you get each representative from each state, a representative from each state, already you have given a section leverage over the other. And what do you, what do you expect? To recommend something different. They recommended this. So, but certainly, as you already pointed out, the most, people, most Nigerians, especially the South, have been anonymous that there's need to zone the presidency to the South for the sake of justice, fairness, and equity. Because if you come to check Nigeria, you find out that since 1960, North has produced the head of government for over 42 plus years, out of 61 years. The South, just 18 years, 18 years, three months. If you want me to give you a breakdown, you find out that North Central has ruled Nigeria for 18 years. By the time His Excellency General Buhari completes his tenure, 
Northwest would have done uh, 19. Then Northeast has done six years. So on the whole, you are having about 43 years. Southwest has done 12 years, roughly. And then South-South, six years. South is six months. Mm -hmm. And we are talking, for the sake of equity, for Nigeria to remain. All because right. if, it's, wait, you, you see that Nigeria Constitution, Section 14, Subsection 3, provides federal character in everything we do. He said that in whatever we do, in recruitment, in appointment, in promotion, so they, the should, they, they, they reflect they federal be. character of Nigeria. Oh, all right, interesting so perspective. So PDP you have has there. not reflected that federal character. Okay, <laughs> interesting submission there. Yes. And I can see that Dr. Akim Baba Ahmed has been listening patiently. Yes. PDP I want to actually not, hear your yes. views, uh, Dr. Akim Baba Ahmed, yes. before I bring in Kenny Robinson. Uh, what do you make of the internal politics of the PDP? Because in between, you have the politics of PDP and then you have the politics of Nigeria. He has just brought in the politics of Nigeria, which states clearly that the North has had more power than the southern part of the country. But within the politics of PDP, uh, people in the North say that the South has held more of the presidential tickets of the PDP than the North. So, I mean, what's your view? And what's the view of the Northern Elders Forum? Hey, my view uh, and the view of the Northern Elders Forum is that all too often we use words and concepts very glibly. When, when you hear people say like North has held power like for so many years and the South has held power for so many years, which North has held this power and which South has held this power? We had a extremely popular, very progressive leadership in this country that came from the southern part of the country. A lot of them, if they were democratically elected, elected by a huge amount of voters from the North who preferred Southerners to Northerners. I can mention Abiola, I can mention uh, Obasanjo, I can mention uh, Jonathan. Northerners know quality, they know value, they know when to submit and trust a, a Southerner to be, to be a leader. Um, and so, uh, and, and, and you, then you hear things like, uh, then the uh, North has held a position for so long. Under, under, under that, that you, you, you scrutinize uh, um, that statement, a lot of n leaders from the northern part of the country have been great leaders for both the north and the south. So this myth, this, uh, this fallacy, uh, and th this rather short-sighted um, position being adopted, that you must regionalize a leadership before it becomes a good leadership. And that's and, where the challenge actually what lies. It, what it suggests, I, I say, I, what it suggests I, I, I is that the, rest, the, re that. the part of the country which is now told, sit, 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 sit down and keep quiet. Um, somebody from your part of the country is not going to be president. Somebody from another part of the country. What you're literally doing is actually consigning them to second class citizens. What I think, I'm not a PDP person and I'm not a spokesman of the PDP. I think what the PDP central, what this committee that has been created by PDP, what, what I think they did was li literally to, to reinforce the position of the Northern Ellis Forum, which is to say, throw open all elective offices, at least at the national level. Let the people decide wh who they want to lead them. We're not, we're, we're not looking for a regional president. We're not looking for a tribal president. We're not looking for a president with a tag on him. We're looking for the kind of Nigerian who can begin to turn around this country after President Buhari is done with it. That's what we're looking for. If you begin to, if you begin to, to ethnicize the president, regionalize him, and use words like justice, equity, and, uh, and fairness, as if these are tribal properties, they are not. Justice means that you're just to every Nigerian. Equity means that you consider every part of Nigeria as equal. Uh, fairness means that you've given everybody's consideration what he needs to, to, be, to, to feel fair. That's the only way to do it. Yeah. It is not owned. It's not <laughs> I mean, owned. And, and that, that's the foundation of the Nigerian constitution, actually. Exactly. And so it's, uh, it, cannot, it cannot be the property of one part of the country. Okay. Because if you say, unless there is, a, in, a, say, a presidency from the South is whatever, there is no justice, equity, and justice in, in, in the country. What you are basically saying is that the moment you do that, the rest of the country is now going to live in, under an unjust, inequitable, and an unfair situation. And that is not acceptable. Very what the PDP did, indeed. what the PDP did, 
is exactly what we've said. Allow every Nigerian to contest, and allow the Nigerian voter to decide who is the best person to succeed President Buhari and to begin the process of reconstructing. F moving us from where we are now, this is the most, the period in the longest history of this country that we have descended to a level where we are actually talking like this about giving tribes the leadership of a country. This is the worst possible well, position. We've always, ha we've always had this debate with us, and that's why we're surprised that this is actually bringing out the underbelly of the Nigerian politics. I mean, what's happening in the main opposition party. And I'll be bringing you in, Kenny Robinson. Let's talk about why the Panaja Delta Forum. I mean, I saw your statement where you were kicking hard, asking the main opposition to ensure that this does not go, I mean, the presidential ticket of the party does not go out of the South. But considering what Hakim Baba Ahmed has said here, the foundation of the Nigerian constitution is actually to see that you know the president co comes from everywhere is elected from everywhere by every citizen why should we be discussing all of this sort of politics at this stage of our nationhood it's uh, let me begin by thanking Arise TV for this opportunity and for the wonderful work you're doing and listening to Baba Ahmed and his comments you know, throws up the issues of inconsistency in, in, in this country. When it pleases us, we support the policy. When it does not please us, we go against that policy. Let us recall that years back, precisely in 2011, when President, then President Goodluck Jonathan won the election, there were protests across some northern states based on insinuations and incitement that it was the North Stone that Jonathan was disrupted. And properties were destroyed, innocent lives were lost. Today, the scenario is different. A Northern president is completing eight statutory years in the person of President Muhammad Gwari. He's from Kasina State, he's from the Northwest, he's from the North. Let us not toy with history and try to erase the part of history that, that, that does not favor us. It is improper. It is unjust and it is against every sense of justice to say that the presidential ticket of any major party, particularly the People's Democratic Party and even the APC should be thrown open. We have said that the Governor Trump's committee had a written script and they have played it out. This conclusion was, unexpe was not unexpected. We knew there were evident pointers that this is how it will end. And we are saying that it is unfortunate and it is not in the national interest. I, I am glad that... Um, and sorry to cut in here. Ahmed, what, what, what exactly is in the national interest here? The national interest, as we speak today, the mood of the country, people are feeling alienated. People feel that they have been excluded in the way and manner the affairs of government is being conducted. And, and I could go on and provide statistics of the imbalances, the biases against certain sections of the country. And so to also now further say that the presidential ticket should be thrown open for anybody that is competent. There are competent people in every part of Nigeria. There are competent people in, this, in southern Nigeria. And Baba Ahmed rightly said so, that... People voted for Southerners in the persons of M. Abiola, Obasanjo, and even Jonathan Goodluck. They had votes across the country. And so any part of Nigeria can produce a president that is acceptable and that will preside over Nigeria properly, particularly in Southern Nigeria. And, and, and we are insisting, and, and it is not out of place to so insist, that after eight years of Northern presidency, in a diverse and complex country like Nigeria, that power should shift to the other part of the country, and that is the South. Oh, okay. Now, I'll, I'll, just ask you, Sorry, I'll, I'll just ask you to hold let, on let there, me. because I, I, I want to ask uh, Hakim Baba Ahmed this. Considering that we've had an eight-year uh, Buhari presidency, isn't it just fair, in the, in the spirit of equity and fairness, like you have said, for someone from the southern part of the country to actually assume the presidency in 2023? just for that geopolitical balancing and to create an atmosphere, uh, an atmosphere of peace and uh, peaceful coexistence, if you may put it that way. Do you want me to respond to uh, that? Yes, yes, go ahead. I mean. Do you want us to bring down the, uh, the constitutional provision that 
you cannot be president of Nigeria unless you win 25% of, uh, of the votes cast in 24 states, first of all, and that you are the person, the candidate with the largest, highest number of votes. That, that insertion in the Constitution was made precisely because those people who framed the Constitution recognized the fact that you needed a Nigerian president and that no, the, not the North or the South can produce a president without the support of the southern part of the country or the northern part of the country. It is inclusive, it is fair, it is just and it is equitable. It means that you cannot become president of the country unless you take over power by force, unless huge parts of the country agree that you can be president. We're talking about one party. One issue of one party, there are I think 20 something parties in this country. If one party doesn't appear to get it, that it must ethnicize and regionalize and tribalize its leadership, that's its business. But the business of Nigerians is that every Nigerian must feel that the president who emerges after 2023 is his president. Now, two, just two quick points. When we talk seriously on, in a program of this nature, we shouldn't, we shouldn't mess around with history. Because that appears to be what my, my brother from, from the Niger Delta is doing. Look, in, in 1999, he knows, as a Secretary of Pandem, he should know. And Ohanese Indigo would know. And the Feni Feri would know. The Northern Elders Forum led a movement that publicly and actively denounced the fourth year record of President Buhari as a failure to lead and told Nigerians to be very careful about voting him back again. We were there. All the four, 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 five of, of us got to got together, together, and told Nigerians, don't vote, don't give President Buhari another four years. He's going to run the country aground. And look at where we are. And we did it together. Together. There was no tribal or regional or, or anything. And we didn't have to say, vote someone else. We said, don't give this person, don't give the president another chance. Now, the, nobody put a gun on our head to do this. People were surprised including people from Pandem, who thought, we thought you Northerners will always root for one of your own. We said, no, we root for Nigeria. Yeah. We root I mean, for Nigeria. I, I that's, remember that's that time. Do. Even, even in the North, I mean, your group received lots now, of North, the second thing, including the presidency. The second history that people pick and choose is the fallacy that the riots of 2011 were because Northerners resented the fact that the president, President, Eradu, er, president Buhari lost to Jonathan. That's that is, uh, that's a falsehood, an unforgivable falsehood. It had nothing to do with that. People protested because they were under the impression that the elections were pronounced even while people were standing in the vote voting. They were pro protesting about the quality of the election, not because the Southerner beat a Northerner. Northerners voted for Jonathan in 2011. Northerners voted for him, supported him. It was Northerners that pushed and supported the, the, the doctrine of necessity. And, uh, Northerners. Uh, uh, so I'll, I'll have to bring in uh, Professor Mwekiaku here. Uh, in, in the midst of all of this, we have seen, for example, the ruling uh, party, the All Progressives Congress, trying to look like it's making an amends and try to throw the presidency, uh, the presidential ticket of the party to the south. Why is it that there's so much agitation about PDP? And why are we not talking so much about other political parties? I mean, we have ABGA. Uh, and then we have the Social Democratic Party and so on. Why is there so much emphasis on just these two big political parties? Yeah, um, thank you so much. Uh, you see, fundamentally, people talk of the two political parties. PDP is the main opposition party. It has the capacity to win at least 25% uh, of votes in uh, not less than 24 states of the Federation just as the ruling party APC. That's why people talk particularly of them. And then you see again, let me make reference to what he said. He mentioned history. I, I, be, I agree with him that we should not toy with history. And that's why I also want to refer to history. In 2015, when Jonathan contested again, the entire North came together and said, power must come back to the North. And the number of us will say, yes, you are right. And that's why our people voted for them. That's why the fact that we have people from the South. 2015, the entire North said power must come back to the North. After a South, uh, uh, after the South has held the power for some years. And it was so. So that oh, is history. No, 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 let me finish. They, they let, voted, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. When I finish, you talk. 
Now, in 1999, he also mentioned that was also part of history. Now, the entire Nigerians felt that the Southwest was shortchanged when Abiola, in, in 1993 uh, presidential election, believed to have been won by Chifeko Abiola, but the military uh, annulled it. So Nigeria felt that there was need to compare set the Southwest. And that was why. The South, it, it, and yes. then someone from the Southwest yes. actually emerged. Uh, yes. So, and that was why the two major parties fielded candidates from the Southwest. You remember that Olufale contested with him. So the issue of, uh, uh, if you say that you zone presidency to a particular state, it, that doesn't mean that you're diminishing the importance. No. So, so just to well, cut in there, wait, wait. what are you anticipating? You want the PDP and APC to actually zone yeah. their presidential tickets all see, to the southern see, part of see, the country. It's not that. Is that what you want? Strategically, for PD, if the PDP, if they eventually do what they want to do, certainly that will be... Uh, PDP will meet his Waterloo. But because isn't that what the Constitution actually no, says? No, and no. I, sorry, I'll bring you in, Kenny Robinson. Yes. Sir. Uh, uh, isn't that what the Constitution tells us to do? To try to build a Nigeria. When someone becomes a president, he's no longer from the North or South. He becomes a president of Nigeria. The People's Democratic Party is a party for all Nigerians. The APC is a party for all Nigerians. Having offices everywhere. Isn't what we should all be striving at? Yes, that's what we, sh we should all be striving at. And let me quickly correct uh, something that Baba Ahmed said. I think he was talking about 2019 and not 1999. Sorry, in, 1990. in 2019, the Northern Elders Forum met with us, the Southern and Middle Belt Leaders Forum, including Pandev, Afenifere, and Oanez Indigo, and the Middle Belt Forum. And we all agreed. We did not just end at say, saying that Nigerians should not continue with this administration. We endorsed a particular candidate in the person of Atiku Abubakar. I remember that event was held at Sharatin Hotel in Abuja mm -hmm. in January 2019. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so that tells us that Southerners, as it were, are not against the North. We are friends of the North, and particularly the Niger Delta people. We are friends of Nigeria, and we have extended tremendous goodwill to Nigeria. What we are saying that in the interest of justice, equity, and fairness, power should rotate. And that has happened from the inception of Nigeria since independence. There has been rotation and zoning of offices. It is not uh, regionalizing the country or the presidency. It's about fairness. It's about equity in a diverse and complex society like Nigeria. And so let, let us say that what the PDP is trying to do uh, uh, is, is unfortunate. And, and we, we see all the desperation and political immorality that is going on. It's unfair. And, and we, we will await as we said in our release, I wait the parties to conduct their primaries and view and assess, evaluate the, cho the choices that we presented to us. But let us restate the position of the Southern and Middle Belt Leaders Forum that any party that does not present a, Northern, a Southern candidate, pardon me, a Southern candidate, we will reject that party. And we are mobilizing our people. It is not about. <laughs> I, 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 and country, some Nigerians will be accusing you of being hasty and not being fair to them. What would you say to that? No, no. No, we, we are not being HT. We, we, we have information from those, even committee members, uh, the conversations that have been going on within the committee meetings. It, it, it is not done in heaven. It is done here on earth. And, you, and there are human beings that are from <laughs> communities that are members of that committee. The 37 members of the committee are human beings. They are families, they are friends, they are associates. And so we, we are privy to information that has been discussed, the discussions of that committee. We are aware of the recommendation that has been made. And we are saying to the neck of PDP, if they go ahead and put that presidential ticket of PDP open, they are saying, reject us, and we are going to do it likewise. All right. I will just ask you, gentlemen, to hold on while we go on this short break. And when we come back, we'll continue the, con the conversation and look at the interests of Nigeria. Where is Nigeria's interest in the midst of all these conversations? Why are we trying to make the geopolitical zone stronger than the nation when you need the nation before you have uh, geopolitical zones stay with us i just want flex don't need stress in my life avoid the yawa and no one queue for the bank Shop, shop, I turn up an account 
digital bank We get the power and our vault I pay my bills easily I'm running things like a boss Collect a loan with no collateral Vault is the answer Take control. Download Vault by Polaris Bank. That's V-U-L-T-E. Visit the Google Play Store or Apple Store now. Vault is available to Polaris and non-Polaris Bank customers. Vault by Polaris Bank. There's no other animal as courageous and majestic as the lion. But with only 50 lions left in Nigeria, they may soon just be a memory. When snares are used for bushmeat, we rob the lions of their food and risk maiming them for life. So please, say no to illegal bushmeat and help protect the lions. Keep them wild and keep us safe. In 1894, our first branch opened in Lagos, Nigeria. And we took our place in this new land brimming with possibilities and surprises. Take Kano, for instance, where the city's wealthiest trader made his first deposit. 20 bags of silver arriving on Camelback. Aren't you glad that we offer online banking today? Expanding across the West African subregion and beyond, our early presence made it possible for all hardworking Africans to build great things. So is it any wonder that not one, but two first bankers have gone on to become Nigeria's central banker? We are intricately woven into the fabric of society, supporting Polo for over 100 years and pushing the limits of athletic performance. Rooted in tradition, but constantly leaning forward into the future. Are you coming? You first, first bank. <laughs> but he's about to realize he's not just building a home, he's building a family. You know it's been kind of hard making the move and all. I think you're a cool son. And you're a cool dad. Kevin! <laughs> I might need that money tonight! <laughs> I've never had pains like this before. Oh, this is the worst one I ever had, son. Oh, it's the worst one. This is a big one. I'm dying. You hear that, Elizabeth? I'm coming to join you, honey. Oh. Maybe that's Elizabeth. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Don't you believe in equality amongst the sexes? And can't men do everything women can do? No. No, we can't. It's unnatural. A little bit icky. Your guys? Well, what did you think Daddy Daycare meant? I thought maybe one guy, not nothing but guys. I just thought it was a clever name. Is this a daycare place? They're guys. They're all guys. They're what? Excuse me, listen. We are two loving, caring parents. We run a daycare center. A couple of sickos is what you are. When Mr. Drummond took on two kids from Harlem. Welcome, gentlemen. He got a little more than he bargained for. Welcome, little brother. What you smoke? They may be as different as night and day. I've never seen a black goldfish before. That's okay. He never saw a rich white man before either. We're adding new titles every day to our awesome collection of blockbuster movies. From Hollywood to Nollywood. Download the app and subscribe. This isn't just a streaming channel. This is a bold new world of entertainment. Arise Play. Beyond Streaming. Welcome back to the Arise interview where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the conversations. I'm Sumner Sambo. Now, let's turn our focus to the implications of the choices that both the All Progressives Congress 
which is the ruling party, and the People's Democratic Party, which is the main opposition, will make when it comes to fielding a presidential flag bearer in each of these parties. What will be the implication of having a northern candidate emerging the PDP and a southern candidate emerging in the APC or vice versa? Well, my guests are still elder statesmen, Professor Charles Mwekiaku, who is the secretary of the Igbo Elders Consultative Forum, and Dr. Hakim Baba Ahmed, who is the spokesman of the Northern Elders Forum, and also in Portacourt, River State, is the national publicity secretary of the pan -Niger Delta Forum, Kenny Robinson. And I'll come to you, Dr. Hakim Baba Ahmed. What will be the implication? Because some people are already saying that this may add to the security situation of the country, considering the religious rhetoric, ethnic rhetoric that's already been uh, made in the open by politicians who just want to exploit Nigerians to get to power? Well, I don't know where that rhetoric is, 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 is coming from and who, who's uh, listening to it. What I can tell you is that it's sad that the entire nation has been reduced to just discussing the fortunes and the impact of the decisions of two parties. These are two parties that I have to remind you virtually run this country aground. The IPC and the PDP have have been running this country since 1999. And look at where we are. The, the legacy that live in this country is that we are now fighting uh, over which tribe uh, should be, the, should be <laughs> their, their candidate. That's really sad. And we keep forgetting the fact that this is a democratic system. It's not the elite. It's not oh, a Hanese or Pandev or Ariwa Consultative Forum or Igbo Elders Forum that is going to pop. It's going to be millions and millions of Nigerians who are going to decide whether they want a do this person or that person. Or even both and, parties. And I can tell you, yeah, or even bo both <laughs> parties. And they can choose another party. This is, this is the point. Why, the, it, the real tragedy, and, and perhaps the biggest uh, legacy, inadvertent legacy, that President Buhari is going to leave behind, will be that for the first time, I think Nigerians are beginning to sit up and open their eyes and say, hey, listen, we've gone through the po worst possible period, seven years that we could have gone under a leadership. This is the time not to be sentimental and, and, and to be t t carried away by um, tags like uh, the truthful, the honest. And we are looking for someone who can pull us out of the ditch in which we live. That is, that is a, the, the reality. And the people who are making all this type of noise, oh, it must be, uh, it must be an Igbo president, it must be a northern president, it must be a southern president, they are committing the biggest atrocity against the Nigerian people. And they're showing the, the worst possible understanding of the democratic process. It's not party leaders, it's not tribal leaders, it's not ethnic leaders, it's going to be voters who will decide, roll down, queue up, and choose who they want to be president. So and the, I can the, tell the you- has to be going for a national figure, a unifying figure. And I can tell you, almost certainly, almost indeed. certainly, the Nigerians are not going to be worried about parties or the, 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 the ethnic uh, origin of the person. They are going to look very hard and try and pick a Nigerian who can solve the problem of insecurity, of poverty, of divisiveness, of the kind of rhetorics that you're hearing now that is setting the country aflame. That, I think, is what is going to happen. Okay, interesting perspective indeed. And I think that's what every Nigerian actually dreams of. I mean, a president who unites the country and doesn't divide. Uh, but that president must actually come from somewhere, from one part of the country, definitely. And I'll bring you in, uh, Kenny Robinson. What do you make of that uh, uh, extrapolation? Uh, a lot of people are actually saying that if we have... Uh, the PDP presenting a northern candidate, which they already seen the possibility, and the APC may be presenting a southern candidate, that this may not necessarily uh, mean well for us in terms of managing uh, or containing what may happen uh, during elections. You know, um, well, they, they said there are times when you read too much book, you, you lose touch with reality. And I think that our friend in the studio uh, is uh, having some effects of that. You see, we are, we are Nigerians because we come from communities. It is communities that make up local government areas. It's communities that, uh, local government areas that make up the state. And there are states that make up the nation Nigeria. We are first of all who we are, from where we come from, before we are Nigerians. If I, I were from somewhere else, I wouldn't have been in Nigeria. So we are Nigerians because we come from communities in Nigeria, and perhaps uh, Baba Ahmed needs to understand that. 
and that where is the place of leadership if he thinks that it's the ordinary Nigerians and the citizens of Nigeria that will kill us. I, I sit here as the leader and I, I tell you I have influence. And what I say to the large extent, people listen. And that is what leadership does. Leadership should be able to provide direction. What we're expecting from the Northern Elders Forum and all the elites and the cultural and religious leadership in all parts of Nigeria at this time in this nation's history is to sit down and say, look, things are not working. Particularly in the last seven years or thereabouts. And together, as we did in January 2019, to fashion a way forward. Perhaps we need to do that now more than ever before. Discuss as a people, frankly, without these rhetorics and hallucinations and, and, and um, dream talks, and face reality that we are Nigerians, things are not working. You are a Nigerian because you come from a place. Buhari comes from Kasina State, from the north, and he has been president for seven years. By 2023, it will be eight years. It is not fair to insist that another northern president can come, because indirectly what you're saying, when you say throw the ticket open, because we know the imbalances. We have 17 states in southern Nigeria, there are 19 states and FCT in northern Nigeria. Already it's an established imbalance. And so what you're telling us when you say throw the race well, open is that that imbalance, uh, sorry to cut you in, that imbalance uh, is a constitutional creation. I mean, it's based on population, is based on landmass and other uh, 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 statistics that are included in this same constitution. Now, the North alone now cannot can me, create can states, and the South alone cannot create states. These states were jointly created. Now, in all of this, where is the interest of Nigeria? That's what I would want you to address, because the idea of having a constitution is to unite all of us to make sure that a certain part of the country or certain ethnic leaders do not force a political party to do a particular thing. Is the decision of the PDP, yes. for example, to open the party's ticket a wrong decision? Isn't it in line with the dream to have a Nigeria that's, that accommodates everyone? A Nigeria that accommodates everyone, that's where there is federal character to ensure that there are no predisposition of power. A Nigeria that accommodates everyone in fact, we need to say that the Constitution was made for man. And it is on the man to interpret and implement and execute the provisions of the Constitution that have been violently disobeyed and, 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 uh, in, in the last seven years by this administration. So, so for a people, what is the Nigerian's interest? Nigeria's interest is a peaceful, united, progressive country. That is the paramount interest of every Nigerian. And you can that he can travel to anywhere. You can only freely. get that if the presidency comes to you. We can get that with a good president from anywhere in Nigeria. Exactly. That Very good. That must be established. Very we good. can get that with every, any, anybody from anywhere who is decent, who is good, who wants the good of Nigeria. Uh -huh. And which actually what, sets what the template. Saying. This actually sets the template for the dream of every average Nigerian. Someone who is elected to be president for everyone. And I'll bring you in, Professor yes. uh, Nwekiaku. No, please, let yes. me conclude. Don't continue. Let oh, oh, me just okay. conclude. Okay, just conclude. Please. So, so the point is that for, for the purposes of fairness. And you see, in a decent society, this conversation would have been unnecessary. We would have taken for granted that after eight years, a presidency in certain areas, and, and we have said, look, nature does not allow some, some, some things to happen. There's a reason why the sun sets in the east, and uh, I mean, rises in the east and sets in the west. It, it, it's, it's, it's proper that uh, our friend, the Northern Elders, the Arewa Consultative Assembly or Forum, and all the Northern leaders, Sit down with us. Let us talk about the, 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 the stability of Nigeria. Let us talk about the peace of Nigeria. Let us talk about the unity of Nigeria. And the fundamental factor is fairness of power. It's, it's, it's the fair distribution of power. We okay. cannot take that for granted at all. All right. I'll, 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 just ask, now. I'll just ask you to hold on now because I have to bring uh, Professor Mwankiaku into this conversation. Because, I mean, you know, you and I know that the Southeast has been agitating so badly that they haven't had power since independence since uh, uh, we had uh, Dr. Namdi Azikiwe as the president, though a ceremonial president of the country, and then we had Agui Ironsi. The only time we ever had someone in power from the Southeast is uh, Dr. Ale Sekweme as uh, vice president in the Second Republic. Now, Professor, Pro Professor Mwekiaku, in, in all of this conversation, yes. 
we want to define the Nigerian interest because you can't force political parties to decide based on ethnic interests. Isn't it the right way to go that all political parties going forward should leave their tickets open to any eligible Nigerian that's, uh, that, that can be voted based on merit, both at party primaries and even national elections, to emerge? Well, thank you so much. I think, uh, um, let me start by correcting you. The issue of, you said that the, uh, he talked about the imbalance. You say it was a constitutional creation. Who created the constitution? That constitution was made by the military. And the military was dominated by people from a certain section of the country. But there because were those wait, from other sections wait, of the country wait, on now. that Supreme Military wait. Council. When Nigeria gained independence in 1960, we had three regions. Western region, Eastern region, and Northern region. By 1963, we had Midwestern region. So we had four regions in Nigeria. But today, Northern region has 19 states. The entire, uh, the other three regions have 17 states. So you can see that there's no uh, balance, there's, there's imbalance. So when people talk about ethnic presidency and this thing, I wonder what they mean. No, every president of Nigeria comes from a local place. That doesn't make that person uh, uh, a Fulani president or Igbo president. But we are saying that, look, the essence of adopting federalism in Nigeria is to accommodate all, uh, uh, all um, ethnic groups, over 350 ethnic groups, is to accommodate them. That's the essence of federalism, where you have different ethnic groups. And that's why Nigeria adopted federalism uh, through 1979 constitution. Now, you find out that, and that is why provision uh, section 14, subsection 3, is there to give every session a sense of belonging. And that's why when you go to jump, you have different cut of math for different states of the Federation. You go to Wayek, the same thing. You go to recruitment, the same thing. So why are we now saying that the same thing should not be applicable to the presidency? Even why in 2019, every Northerner and every progressive minded Southerner, including myself, said you should go to the North. Why are we now reducing it to uh, ethnicity? And so, so in other words, you are not receiving support what? from the northern system no, around. No, I don't want to say that because I know that uh, many people from the north are also saying that this power should be zoned to the south. I know a number of people from the middle belt, even from outside the middle belt, who are saying that for the sake of uh, justice, fairness and equity, that power should go to the uh, south. And when it gets to the south, I'm sure that the southeast will negotiate with other uh, zones to ensure that it is micro zone to them. And we are saying that all these people that have been in power, as uh, my friend the Baba Ben Radi pointed out, see where Nigeria is today. There's insecurity everywhere. You cannot buy kerosene in Nigeria. You can buy uh, cooking gas, no fuel, unemployment, insecurity everywhere. Even the military, uh, this thing is not um, uh, 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 shielded from it. And so, we need a new Nigeria. And we are saying in order to have a new Nigeria, power should change. Right. And we are saying that that power should go to the south. You know, I, I'm yeah. very yeah. interested. And I'll bring you in, Dr. And when it gets to the south, I, certainly... I can see you're so keen to, no, to, to, when, to respond. When, when Just conclude get, no, so no, that no. he comes When it gets to the south, I'm sure southwest and south-south, we might present it to the southeast because we well, want... Well, that's your assumption. Wait, because we wait, hear the yes, southwest that, saying that they that, want it. Wait, that's <laughs> assumption because it's assumption. It has to be negotiated. And we are saying, if you are doing the same thing and getting the same result for over 63 years now, there's need to have a change. And that change is to allow a zone that hasn't been opportune to produce. To let them come now Give it to that zone so that you have a president that is creative, a president that is uh, 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 enterprising, and a president that will restore the unity of Nigeria. Uh, okay. Otherwise, otherwise, if things go the way it is, as PDP has done, certainly you know that the demand, separate demand will continue. 
insecurity will continue. Uh, all right. Because well, people uh, will uh, there's no, that there, there's are, actually no yes. guarantee that, I mean, if we go that way, that it will so go the way you're saying. Uh, uh, but I want that, uh, Dr. Akim Babame to actually comment, because first. you have raised some very strong perspective here, Dr. Uh, Professor Mwakiaku, yes. and you make it look like uh, the northwest of the country and the southwest are using their population to actually, you know, deal with uh, the other parts of the country. Because, See. I mean... Voting is based on population and all of that. I want you, Dr. Akim the point, to the react point, to some I of I think the, the first point, the first point um, it, it, I want to respond to is the last one he made. If you are going to ask for the presidency of the country on the basis of threats, or insurgency will, incre will, in conclude, will include, uh, will continue, um, insecurity will include, you're blackmailing the rest of the country, and we are not impressed. If you're saying the only way you are going to get rid of IPOP and in insecurity in the South is, is if there is an evil presidency, then I will tell you one thing. Even when you do have an evil presidency, you're not going to get an end of that. Because the people for whom you got the evil presidency knows that they are the ones who got the presidency and not you. The worst possible ex uh, uh, ploy, uh, the uh, um, campaign strategy for, for a lot of the very good evil people that are contest asking Nigerians to trust them, is that they're actually victims of the very people that they are relying on to get it for them. And if, if, if one, I don't want to appear arrogant about this, but if one is advising the evil, if those who are genuinely interested in getting the presidency, the last card they want to play is this tendency to say, if you, don't, if you want peace in this country, bring presidency to the southeast. Everybody can say the same thing. They are not the only people who have a monopoly of violence. And, uh, and, 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 and terror. That's the first point. The second thing is, look, the, this argument about the North uh, has uh, inequality, the North has majority of this, the North has a majority. Let me ask you something. Kano State, Kano State has about six or seven of, uh, uh, the population of Kano State is about six or seven uh, of the populations of seven states. It has three senators, three, three senators in the Senate. The state that has two point something million people has three senators. That's federal character. Nobody is quarreling with that. The House of Reps, on the other hand, reflects uh, um, population. Nobody is quarreling with proportional that. Proportional representation. Nobody is quarreling with that. Seventy something percent of the land of, in this country belongs to the North. The North has the largest population. We're not quarreling with that. When you reduce the entire the entire leadership of this country to the president. You keep forgetting you have Igbo presidents, you have minister Igbo, many uh, Yoruba ministers. There is no government that has ever been formed, military or civilian, that did not include virtually every element of Nigeria. And yet, when it goes well, they say Northerners were in power. When it goes wrong, they say it is the Northerners who did it. <laughs> very we very didn't create this country. We did not. Um, the Northerners did not create Nigeria. We did not. Do, and the, we don't own the military. The military did what they did, and we are all victims of what the military did. Uh, uh, what oh, they do okay. is they will tell you, uh, Mutala was a Northerner, uh, well, this one was a Northerner. Who, who came, who, who, who voted for them from the North? These were military people. But it is now convenient to now r throw this at, at us and say, oh, uh, uh, they, were, they were our own people. When the South was benefiting from that, the economy of the country is in a thousand hands. There are millions and millions, oh, okay. I, I think uh, you need to hear Bambam this. Bambam. There are millions and millions and millions of Igbo people who are living peacefully, making a huge amount of money in many parts of the country. Nobody is quarreling with that. We like it. We are grateful for that. And we want them to continue to be part of this country. If it is the choice of Igbo politicians that there will be no peace in the East, there will be no point in, 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 in Nigeria, unless the Igbo has the presidency, the first thing they need to do, or they, they, become, they, they move to Biafra, the first thing one would advise them to do is why don't you ask your Igbo people? Uh, do uh, they want to leave Nigeria or they want to lead Nigeria? Okay, well, I don't think the uh, majority of them want to actually do because we are all united in this country and uh, the country has served as a big umbrella for everyone. Yeah, but it can only happen based on uh, fairness, equity and justice, like you have said. But I want to bring in uh, Kenny Robinson into it because, I mean, in 30, 30 seconds uh, before we go, what's actually uh, the implication of this open ticket in all the political parties, whether APC or PDP and all of that? Is it that some people are afraid that uh, when it's thrown open and, and it's not zoned, that they don't have capacity to win elections based on their own merit, that unless they have to be thrown by a zone, that's when they can win the presidential ticket of a party? 
My brother, let me respond quickly to what you have asked, but before that, let me correct the blackmail by Baba Ahmed. Very quickly, Baba because Ahmed. we don't have enough no, time. No, hold on, please. Because there are Igbos in Cameroon. They don't have to be Cameroonians to be in Cameroon. I know a lot of Igbos that are in Cameroon, in Ghana, and across the world, in several countries. They don't have to be citizens of that country to be in those countries. So, so that, that narrative is unnecessary, and it has been repeated several times, and it's unnecessary. We don't need those kind of conversations now. They are insulting. But having said that, the train the ticket open clearly is, is, is because some persons think they are at advantage when it is open so they can um, undermine others to win. Don't forget that party tickets are not won, they are given. And I stand to be corrected. I have followed political processes for many years, and I know that party tickets, particularly the presidency, are not won, they are given. Party members decide and say this is the direction we are going, and they follow that direction. Yeah. Party faithfuls are directed to vote in that direction. We saw what happened recently at the APC National Convention. That is how the presidency of parties are won in Nigeria since the, the, the independence. Uh, and I, I, we know the stories of how Shagari got the presidential ticket of the NPM. Oh, in all, all right, very quickly, because I, so, I, so, I so so very quickly, what what we need to do as the people, as Nigerians who love this country. Who, who are interested in the unity and progress of this country, who wants Nigeria to, to be stable, and, and who thinks that what is happening today in Nigeria is not acceptable. We have the oh. benefit of history. Oh, not okay. To the um, of the I'm afraid I, I just have to bring in uh, Professor right Mwekia now, Kuh now <laughs> because we don't have enough time. Just very quickly, is it that some uh, you know, uh, uh, politicians in these big parties are afraid of uh, you know the ability to win this ticket alone, and that's why they are you know uh, borrowing the ethnic robe to want to make it look like it should be that way, so that they can get the PDP or APC ticket and all of that. Yes, thank you so much. First of all, uh, I think Baba May got me wrong when I said if you don't zone the presidency to the south, there that insecurity will continue. That doesn't mean that the Igbos will be responsible for that. No, the Igbos uh, were not responsible for the attack at the airport. They were not responsible for the attack at the uh, the, uh, at the railway, there are uh, serious attacks in parts of the north. The Igbos didn't do that. So we are not saying that. We are saying that insecurity in the country will continue because we want a president that will do something different. Wait, 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 wait. All right. We are saying <laughs> that we quickly. want a president that will do something different in order to address the, all the problems confronting Nigeria. Yeah. And so long as you continue to use the leverage on population. Y yes, you pointed the Kano. You said Kano has three senators. You forgot to tell Nigerians that oh. Lagos has more population than Kano. And Kano, Jigawa uh, oh. was cut after Kano. Kano has 44 local governments. Jigawa, uh, oh, oh, cut oh, 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 has right. 33, uh, 77. Okay, Lagos cool. has just 21. You I'm, I'm afraid you're making a very valid so, point. Uh, you first have said that. But unfortunately, so I don't have I, I don't we have time. I mean, this conversation has that. to continue some other time, and I, I would have loved uh, <laughs> Dr. Akim Baba Ahmed to also do that. Well, we we'll have to thank you so much. Uh, Kenny Robinson is the spokesman of PANDEF, and then Dr. Akim Baba Ahmed is the spokesman of the Northern Elders Forum. I'm Professor Charles Mwekeaku. He's uh, the secretary of the Igbo Elders Consultative Forum. We must thank you for being on Arise News. Well, that's how it's been for this edition of the Arise interview. Very explosive one. Do join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Goodbye and thank you for watching. I'm Soma Sambo. It makes me feel terrible to see a country as big as Nigeria, as resourceful as Nigeria, and we are importing all our petroleum products. Setting up a 650,000 barrels per day refinery is usually a project that is set up by sovereign countries, not by individual, no matter how big you are. It is very, very challenging project. It is huge. 
Uh, this is the biggest site today, and actually in Africa, and definitely one of the biggest in the world today. The most uh, transformational things that will be not only for Nigeria, but for Africa in the next 10 years. We have 29,000 Nigerians that are getting massive training. My prayer is that I will give most of my wealth while I'm alive. But, you know, I'm very, very passionate about Nigeria and making Nigeria great.